In 1936, the Detroit Institute of Arts acquired this work. We thought at the time it was a painting by Leonardo da Vinci, the great Italian Renaissance master. Today we know it is a fake. It's what we call a sophisticated fake. Sophisticated because the forger used a very good technique to or recreate the technique of the masters of the 16th century and render this figure imitating the style of Leonardo in an incredible fashion. But there are other elements that are interesting about this work of art and this exhibition allows to see them because some of our paintings are shown in cases where you can see the back of them. So let's go look at the back of the painting. You can see on the back of this painting two wax seals. Normally wax seals tell us, give us information about the provenance of the work of art. We were unable to identify the families that apply those wax seals on the back of the painting. You can see also that the panel on which this painting is painted, this fake, it's old. And the forger used an old piece of wood to create that sensation that the painting was aged, it was old. There are other elements on the, frame, the back of the frame that are interesting as well. You can see the labels. One of them say, Mostra di Leonardo da Vinci, Palazzo dell'Arte Milano. That means that this, ex this painting was included in an exhibition in 1939, an exhibition about Leonardo da Vinci. This is a very interesting fact, because when this work came in the collection, it came with the best of intentions. We thought it was a Leonardo da Vinci. Many people in the world thought it was a Leonardo da Vinci. And the scholar Italians thought it was an authentic work of art. But today, we know it isn't. We did further analysis on this work in our conservation lab. And there we found amazing things through the work of our scientist researcher. In order to better understand this painting of a young woman, uh, the pigments used in creating this painting were studied and the technique used was X-ray fluorescent spectroscopy, which gives elemental information about the pigments used and it is non-destructive. It does not require taking a sample. Pigments have a history of use, and that is especially true with white pigments. Lead white has been used since antiquity. Uh, zinc white, however, is a pigment that came into use in the 19th century. So when studying the use of white pigments employed in this painting, if it were indeed a 15th century painting, we would expect to see lead white and lead white only. I did the analysis of a pearl from the necklace on the young woman, and this uh, image here shows the point of analysis. The bright dot uh, marks the point of analysis, and uh, this spectrum below gives me the results. These two peaks right here, these two major peaks, indicate the presence of lead, consistent with the use of lead white. However, this peak right here indicates the presence of zinc, which indicates the use of zinc white as well. Now, if zinc were detected in only one or two locations on this painting, that use of a 19th century pigment could be attributed to a conservation treatment of the painting during some time in its history. However, zinc was detected throughout this painting, suggesting that this painting is not a 15th century portrait, but is a painting that was created in the 19th century or later. On this wall, we have three drawings. The three of them were considered to be by the artist Johann Bartel Junkind. 
Today we know that two are authentic and one is a forgery. Junkin was a Dutch artist who worked at the end of the 19th century and beginning of the 20th century. He was very much admired, especially by the Impressionist artists like Claude Monet. But let's look closely to these drawings. You can see here a watercolor. This watercolor is authentic and it bears a handwritten signature. You can read there, Junkin, 1885. If you look at this drawing here, this is a pencil drawing, you can also find that it's signed and you can read Junkin. However, the signature in this drawing is different than the handwritten signature in the watercolor. This is also an authentic drawing. This drawing was authenticated by the family after the artist died with a state stamp. That state stamp bear the signature of Junkin. That's what you can see here. Let's look at the middle drawing. Here you can see that this drawing is also signed. It shows a handwritten signature. But this handwritten signature does not match the handwritten signature in the watercolor. It actually matches the handwritten signature on the pencil drawing. The signature that was created with the state stamp after the artist had died. Therefore, that signature there that is handwritten and that imitates the state stamp signature has to be forged. There is also another interesting element on this drawing. There is a handwritten inscription there. You can read Dordrecht, 1864. Dordrecht is a city in the Netherlands. We know by archival research that Junkit was not in Dordrecht in, 16, in 1864. All these elements plus the weak execution of this drawing allow us to think that this is actually a forgery imitating the style 